Well, I've got uh, Rob Collister, MHK, who's got responsibility for tourism with me today. And we're definitely picking up on, on the numbers thing, because I was looking back on our interview from last year when there's this big dip. And I've interviewed Mr. Skelly. In fact, last year, people were calling for his head because we 8% down or something. It was 8.7% down. And they've refocused, the, or they've, they've looked back at these figures. And I mean, at the time you were in the interview, you were quite adamant that you didn't think they were right. You thought there was something wrong. So you must be quite pleased. Should we start with that one? That, that, yeah. the, that you, we weren't down after all. It was just. Well, let's go back 12 months. Um, there was an announcement that we were 25,000 visitors down or 8.7% down. And at the time, I questioned it because as a political member, I get uh, reports monthly from accommodation providers and from industry to tell us how the year's going. And I realized there was a flat line or it was about steady, a slight increase, slight decrease or a flat line. And I feel personally, I was proud that the steam packet and accommodation providers across the island came out and said, well, hang on a second. We don't believe that report is correct. Um, we felt um, the business was ticking along. It's not great headlines, if you know what I mean. I mean, accommodation providers want more. And there's this, even in this report, the current report, there's, there's things we have to work on. But over generally, I think most accommodation providers last year were saying their, their bookings were about on par. Steam Packet was saying they were slightly up. So it, it, it didn't add up. Mm. It didn't add up from the data I'd received for the 12 months previous. And it didn't um, stack up to the information we were getting back from accommodation providers. Where did you find these missing numbers? Well, I didn't find them. Um, let's go back. Um, the, the actual um, passenger surveys are conducted by Economic Affairs through the Cabinet Office. And they passenger survey people coming into our airports, coming into the sea terminal. What's changed over the last 12 months is the fact is that we're getting better data. And that is the, the key part of this. So we're speaking to the airlines. We've still got one airline that we need to get on board and we're working very, very hard to get that airline on board. Um, we've sp we get data from the steam packet. So we've got more accurate data about the type of person visiting the Isle of Man. Are the locals leaving or coming? Is it family or friends? Yeah. Is it visitors? So we've got a lot better accurate data going forward. With regard to the methodology and what's happened last year, that's a question you'll have to put to maybe Chris Thomas. Or oh, the well, I will do. We'll yeah. put it to because the Because he was adamant, adamant, wasn't he? That, I mean, that those numbers he were was. right. And I, I remember coming on to your um, programme yeah. and saying that I felt he was totally wrong on that. Industry was telling me it was wrong. So there must have been a problem last year with the methodology. And what we've done is we've gone back the last three years just based around proper, accurate data. Yeah. It's still a survey, so we have to put that in the caveat. It's still a survey, and there is still a best guess to ask estimate. But based on that, we had um, 308,000 in 2016. We dropped to 305,000 in 2017. We've gone back up slightly. Um, I think it's 0.8%. Um, back up to 308,000. So it's good, but it's not brilliant. So, but you, you know, if those numbers had been the other way around and there'd been a massive 8% upturn, no one would be refocusing those figures. They would have just walked away and gone, they're fine, we're happy, everyone's happy. It's, it's almost like, oh, we've, we've really got to sort of that because it made the Telegraph last mm. year, it made the uh, regional news, I think it made the news channels a story. Uh, obviously, not everything you didn't really want to go out there. So can people really believe okay. what we're hearing about if these numbers? If we take the headlines last year, it hurt very deeply, I'll be honest on that. Hit me as the political member. I think it, it it was felt in the team as well, the tourism team. Everyone was scratching their heads. We we just and as I say, there was the, how the story was released, how that report oh, went yes, into the on, public. It was domain. on uh, Thursday before Easter, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So that it was all of that, and it was really it was just badly handled at the time. But I felt really sorry for the staff because we have a very dedicated and focused team that are trying to promote the Isle of Man. Um, we have a brand new visit agency which has the professionals or the industry themselves sitting around the table trying to promote the island for the good of the island and for all the industries across the island. Um, so it, it has been incredibly difficult 12 months, but we've got so much more work to do over the next 12 months. Well, do we not compare ourselves? I think, again, we talked about this last year, Guernsey, Jersey, and those sort of things. They were showing 5% up and that sort of thing. I mean, we've got 0.8% even okay. you know, after the figures were re-looked re at. But their this budget is, a massive pull. Is and it that, just down to budget? It is come down to marketing budget. A lot of it does. We have got a fantastic project here, and we're working hard to show that. I, I've been around so many hotels, accommodation providers in the last two years. We've got some fantastic accommodation now coming online. We've got some great um, offerings here. We've got great walks. We've got heritage railways. We've got every single product that we can sell 
absolutely in place. But what we've got to do now is to market the island even better. If you take the budget for Jersey and Guernsey, they're significant. We're talking millions compared to us. So we do need to spend a little bit more and to increase our marketing budget mm. in order to promote the Isle of Man further afield. Well, you might say they haven't got steam trains and all that sort of thing, but obviously you have to, as, as a government, invest that money. And it, we've seen the figures about how, in the papers, didn't they? they said how much everything costs and how much revenue it makes. Uh, I mean, that's where, isn't that where your money's being drawn into yeah. running the, the, these things rather than being able to publicise them like these other... I've um, raised those questions and some people are saying, well, why am I raising them? I have political responsibility. But what I was trying to understand myself was, because I knew you know, when Mr. Harmer has put, for example, we're going slightly off topic, but right. when Mr. Harmer was increased the, um, the school bus fare by 10 pence, it generated 75,000 pounds. I don't think he'd actually done enough to achieve the savings. So what I actually done was I tabled a load of questions to find out because based on previous press releases, I knew the bus van in, I knew the Heritage Railway were having record numbers. So I was saying, well, if anything, the income should have um, increased mm -hmm. and it has increased. But what we also have noted is the running costs have increased. So we've now got to try and drill down to make sure that we've got a product that we can sell to our visitors, but it also, the running costs are controlled. And that is the next big headache for me to look at. Oh, really. Okay, interesting. So and to work with DOIs sure. on that to try and get those costs balanced. So uh, you're not happy with, with the way the, the, the steam trains, the electric trams, are using their budgets? So is that what you're saying? No, I just need to explore exactly because if you take, um, for example, Bus Vanin, they've got record numbers, but the actual running costs have gone up by two million pounds over the last two years. So it's a case of trying to work out exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have some of the best buses. We've got Wi-Fi on them. They're the, the state of the art. They yeah. are fantastic. They are fantastic. And for our visitors, especially if we just focus in on TT. We have more and more, and we're talking many thousands now, of fans travelling to the Isle of Man by air, by air who then use our local okay. transport system in order to get around. We've gone of the days when people just turn up on bikes. They are now using all sorts of um, different means cool. of transport. Okay, returning to the subject then, uh, yeah. the, the boat traffic is down. It is. Considerably. Uh, well, that's how it reads anyway. I mean, you, yeah. you can give me some more well, questions. Let's, let's how do you, are you worried about it? I was a bit um, concerned with regard to the headline figure, which was 17,000. My job is visitors, and the 17,000 um, figure is technically right, but it's not right when we look at just visitors. And I think the, um, the figure is 9,700 down for visitors. However, on the flip side of that, air tr passengers has increased by 12,300. So it's people again are choosing their method of traveling to and from the Isle of Man, which is really good. So that means from a visitor's point of view, they've got choice. Mm. But you, you, again, you've got to drill down, and are they visitors, are they just coming home? Are they? No, they are proper know. visitors. So right. that's what I'm saying. With The headline was 17,000 sea passengers down, down, but they were locals and visitors. What with the actual visitor section of that is is just over nine thousand, but that's been replaced by an increase of th um, twelve thousand three hundred travelling uh, or flying to the Isle of Man, which is excellent news. And I think that comes down to the locations of of the airlines worth travelling to. I think it's the new routes that are coming online or that came online last year. I, I think it's the choice. Uh, you know, people are, are voting now or uh, when they go on to pick their holidays. They're picking the route that suits them, and that's really good. Well, obviously, we've got lots more to talk about, so we'll have a part two.